Hi, and welcome to this module on using 3D formulas to calculate across multiple worksheets. Now this is actually based on two different types of features in Excel that we're going to go through. The first thing you need to understand is something called ranged names. Now if you have a look at the worksheet and you open the one called named ranges in your files, you will see that generally in Excel, a cell has a name corresponding with a letter and a number. So for example, if I look at cell B3, the range name is B3 as shown in the formula box. But it's sometimes a lot easier when we're using formulas to name specific cells rather than trying to click on them and find them when adding to your formula. So the first thing we're going to do is have a look at our salary column. What we would like to do is in cell F4, we'd like to calculate the new salary based on the percentage increase, which in this case is 2.91. So rather than using an absolute reference to complete this formula, we're going to use a named range. So what we need to do is click on the cell that has got the percentage in it, and we need to rename the cell. Currently, it is cell F1. Before we go and rename the cell, you can use the drop-down arrow here in the name box to check is there any other names that currently exist in the worksheet to make sure you don't duplicate. And in this stage, there is no additional names. When naming cells, remember you cannot start with numbers because it cannot look anything like an existing Excel cell. So you can use text, you can use numbers in the middle, and also remember no spaces. So if you need to create a space, you can use your underscore character. So in this case, we are going to name the cell as percent underscore increase. Once you've done that, you just push enter on your keyboard. You will now notice that there is a cell range name called percent increase. So in order to do our formula, we're going to start with equals our existing salary multiply by and instead of clicking on the cell, we can just use the named range. And there's two ways to do this. You can e either use the drop down arrow and look for that particular named range or you can start typing out the name because we know it's called percent increase. When you start typing out the name, you'll see all your formulas relating to those letters, but you will also see the named range and you'll see it's tagged slightly different. So you'll double click that, you'll see that it selects the correct cell, and then we need to add the original salary in order to complete our formula. Once you've done this, you can now double click on the corner cell to copy the data down and you now have your new named range salary. Now sometimes we want to name an entire range of cells based on column headings. So for example, at a later stage, we might want to sum all the new salary data and we want to be able to create an entire range for that data. So what we're going to do is select all the data that has got headings. And in the formulas tab on the menu, you'll see there's an entire group called the defined names group. In here, there's an option that says create from selection. You can also use the shortcut control shift F3. It asks you create names from values in which section. In this case, we only want to use the top row as our named ranges. From there, you click OK. So let's test out our theory. Let's say we wanted to see an average of the years of service. So instead of going and creating this formula at the bottom, we can now use our named range. So we'll start typing average, and when it comes time to putting in our formula, instead of selecting all the data, we're going to start to type years of service. You will notice that the named range has been created. So you double click that and select enter. 
Let's now do another example. Let's say we would like to sum all of our new salary data. So we'll use a sum function. Instead of selecting the entire column, we will type in new salary, and there is our named range, and push enter. The next thing we're going to look at now that we've created a selection based on column headings is sometimes you don't actually want the column headings as your range names, but you would like a block of data that you could use later on in a formula. So if you scroll a little bit right on your spreadsheet, you will see I've created an example of sales data. So this is various regions with the months January to June. If we wanted to use the total average median of those values, what you would need to do is select all this data and you can now call it a name. And in this case, we're going to go to our name box and we're going to call it Jan underscore June underscore sales so that we know exactly what that data is about. And then you can push enter. Now, when you are calculating in formula, sometimes you don't remember what the ranges are called. Or if it's someone else's spreadsheet that you're working on, you don't know what they called all the names. So let's say, for example, we wanted a sum value of all the sales data, but we're not sure what the name of the range is. And the formula box drop down can sometimes be difficult to look through. There's two other ways of looking at it. The easiest way is selecting F3 on your keyboard. That will give you a list of all the named ranges on your spreadsheet. You can choose the one you want to click and click OK. And that'll select the name range for you. Sometimes we'll also create ranges that are incorrect or we've made a mistake or has included the wrong selection. To be able to see all your named ranges and edit or delete them, as well as add new ones, if you go back to the formulas menu and in the defined names group, you'll see there's a button that says name manager. This over here gives you a list of all your named ranges, the values that are included in them and which part of which spreadsheet it refers to. And from here, you can create new ones, edit, or delete the particular name values. The next part of our module, we are now going to look at how we can use 3D formulas to calculate across various worksheets. So for the purpose of this exercise, you can open the file called 3D formulas. So let's have a look at this particular spreadsheet. We've got sales performance by quarter, for various sales groups. So we've got Northeast, Southeast, Northwest, and Southwest for various divisions of our business. And each sheet is a particular quarter. The only way where 3D formulas will work is if every single sheet has the exact same layout. So here you can see all the way from quarter one through to quarter four, we've got the same layout. Now what we would like to do is create a summary sheet so that we'll be able to see, for example, consulting for the Northeast region for all the quarters. Now, in order to create a summary sheet, you could copy and paste this data onto a new sheet, but you would have to check the formatting. Or there is an easier way is just to copy the sheet. Now, ordinarily, most people will right click the sheet and select move or copy. But there is also an easier way. So what we'd like to do is we'd like to take our sheet and with our mouse button, our left mouse button, is click on it. This gets ready now to move it. But if you hold down control as well, you'll see it creates a little plus sign. This means we're now going to add a new sheet. So you choose the area that you would like to and then let go of your mouse and control. This now gives you a duplicate of your quarter one sheet. We can now rename this sheet as our summary sheet. And to make sure that our data is correct, we can maybe next to the heading, 
or under the sales performance where it says first quarter, just indicate that this is the summary. Now the data currently in these cells relate to quarter one because we copied the sheet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete all this data. We'd like to create a formula that very easily calculates across multiple sheets. Now usually what people would do is they would start off with equals, go to quarter one, select the cell, do your plus, go to quarter two, select the cell, do your plus, and so on and so forth until you are finished and included all the sheets. The problem with this particular equation, I've included too many data, is that it's very tiresome. If you had, for example, a hundred sheets, it would take you a long time to click through all these sheets. So let's see if there's an easier way. We start off with a function, depending on what we want to do, and in this case it's sum. And then you can select all the sheets by using your shift button to show exactly which sheets need to be included in this formula. So you start by clicking on your first sheet and at any time you can see in the formula box what is happening to your formula. Then you go to the last sheet and before you click hold down shift. That will select all the sheets in between. So you can now see that your sum is including data, everything from quarter one to quarter four. But you still need to tell it which cell or cell ranges to sum. And that is when you click on your cell B5. It doesn't matter which sheet you're in at this stage. Once you've done that, select enter. That will now add all the data between sheets quarter one to quarter four cell B5 which makes it a lot easier. You can then copy this data down and across rather than clicking from sheet to sheet to add up or calculate values across multiple worksheets.